Teach a Man and Fish channel. Hold on to your seats, everyone. This is gonna be a really fun video. One that's been on the video list for quite some time, and now I'm finally really excited to show you this recipe. It sounds complicated, but the results you have got to add into your recipe list. It's a crowd pleaser. It's not difficult to do once you get past the the name of it, basically. Name of the recipe is asobuco. Asobuco is Italian for hole in the bone. What we'll be using is the shank portion of the leg. We'll be doing this in two different methods, a little bit more difficult one, and then the really easy, clean it off the deer, throw it in the bag, and throw it on the stove. Let's go ahead and get started. So I've got four shanks, two from the front and two from the rear. This is the rear shank. So you envision that whole ham is up on this part and the rest of the, from the mid part of the leg down goes from here, not a whole lot of meat narrows down to there. But you've literally got all this meat that us hunters typically will pass up on this. There's a bunch of sinew, you can see right in through there, that spread all throughout this meat. Those tendons, uh, not a whole lot of muscle in that leg. When I think of all the legs that I've thrown away over the decades and watched my buddies throw them away or I've ground them up into hamburger, man, at this point, it makes me want to cry because I've passed up on so many fantastic meals. When you cook this per this recipe, all of that sinew and tendon and connective tissue turns into liquid inside that meat. It's almost like a cream texture. For those of you who've eaten barbecue, you know, and if you watched any of my other videos, you know we talk about the magic temperature of 203 degrees. At 203 degrees, connective tissue dissolves and turn in, turns into a liquid, which is what makes pulled pork so phenomenal to eat. Well, the same thing happens in a deer shank or the deer leg portion. All of that connective tissue dissolves into the meat and you are left with a phenomenal cut. Here you can see the front portion. We'll be cutting off somewhere right around in here. But then on these two front shanks, we're going to then cut them into discs, which is another way to present this. It actually presents better, but it takes a little bit of extra work. It doesn't taste any different either way, but it presents better if you're cooking for other people. Cut into discs cooked whole in this manner. First of all, we'll go ahead and get this front leg presented and show you my, uh, I guess you want to call it a backwoods method, my backwoods bandsaw, backwoods meat bandsaw. You'll see uh, how, how I do this. So first of all, we'll go ahead and get the more difficult of the two out of the way. Again, front leg, back shank, and we'll work on the shank of this front shoulder. That saw was the most difficult part of making this. You don't have to do it this way. Now I'll show you the easier way. Ready to go. So there was actually a little bit of cleanup needed to be done and there was some, of course there's some hair needs to be taken, taken off. But then you want to pat dry because everything browns better when it's dry. So you pat all of these pieces of meat down. Now that we've got that meat good and dried out, you will have to get rid of some of the bone dust that comes off if you're doing the, the saw portion. 
We'll go ahead and brown this. I like, I like avocado oil, but you can also use olive oil or whatever your favorite oil is. Uh, I may even try some lard in this one just to see how that comes out. We'll be frying and baking this in cast iron in our lodge enameled for one of them and then a lodge five quart just regular cast iron. Let's go ahead and get these browned on all sides and then assemble the ingredients and into the oven it goes. No more complicated than that. Always remember, hot cast iron, cold oil, warm meat. You won't have sticking issues with that. Light coating of oil on the bottom. There's a dusting of pepper and salt on this. Now we're just going to brown all those edges. Some people like to coat them in flour at this point, which does add some additional flavor. I wash my carbs, so I don't think it adds enough for me to, to even put the flour in there on top of it. At this point, we just get all those edges browned. So much flavor resides in that skin on the meat as well as the what sticks to the bottom of the pan. This is where the cooking will actually be done in the pan and it will deglaze and that flavor will go right up into your sauce. So for the rest of this cook, you're pretty much using your standard cook, cooking base. Uh, I think the French call it mirepoix or something like that. Cajuns call it the trinity. Uh, Spanish call it the sofrito. Brazilians call it something else. And basically it's your base of celery, onions, and peppers cooked with many different spices, many different ways. I found the easiest way to do it is simply go to the Goya section in your grocery store and pick out sofrito it's inexpensive doesn't have many carbs in it is awesome flavor it's already ready made and sometimes i spice it up a little bit i've got some extra celery and some extra peppers i'm going to go ahead and throw in with this uh, as well as a bouillon my brother introduced me to goat bouillon believe it or not that ends up tasting really, really good. It's a, a unique flavor. I think the Hispanics use this a lot, or Latinos. So thank you to my brother. Maybe someday we can get him to do a guest cook. If you guys comment down below, we can get him to come on and do some guest cooking for it. He's influenced my cooking more than he'll ever know. I'll throw some parsley in. And like I said, I've got a red pepper that needs to be used. And you throw all that in, and from that point forward, really all you're doing for the next two and a half to four hours, you're just monitoring the liquid, making certain it doesn't dry out, and your cook gets done. We'll go ahead and throw all that together and put it in the oven. Got everything together. At this point, we just start adding it in. First, we'll go ahead and put the sofrito. I've never done two Dutch ovens like this at once. So we'll see how this works out. I'll put about one and a half in each. Now some bouillon. And because I'm a cheapskate, I take my bouillon, get every last little bit out of that jar.
into the oven they go. We'll see you back in about three to four hours. You definitely want to keep an eye on your liquids. Looking good and smelling good. All right, we've hit three hours. And of the two sets that are in here, if the whole shank is done, the other one, oh yeah, look at that. No doubt, that's ready. So we're gonna go ahead and Pull these out, set them aside to rest, go ahead and make a side for it, and then we'll be ready to plate it up. So tender and juicy too. Not like some of that deer meat that you get. So when you roast it, it can end up kind of dry. Mm. That's the stuff. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. And this playlist is my list of videos for venison cooking. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.